From United Nations Television, this is UN in Action. Tools to detect nuclear explosions are delivered to a remote outpost in Yellowknife, Canada. Teams from Canada and the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization are upgrading seismic stations to uncover atomic blasts. Where we are, the swamp shut down there. Ross Ashley is a seismic technician. The other helicopter and those thing loads too, so. Well, we're currently at uh, White 3. This is uh, the broadband site. We're installing a new power supply, battery system, and new sensor. It's a massive logistical effort. Around 60 tons of equipment must be flown in to 20 different sites. Together, they create an array, like a giant microphone, to track and record vibrations in the Earth. Yellowknife is one of the over 300 stations dotted across the globe to detect nuclear explosions. It's part of a verification system designed to monitor violations of the 1996 Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, or CTBT, adopted by the UN General Assembly. At the heart of each station is a seismometer. This one is kept in a cave tunneled into solid, stable rock to protect the sensors against extreme cold. It was initially established by the British in the 1960s to eavesdrop on Soviet nuclear explosions. Scott Dodd, technician from the Geological Survey of Canada, has come to replace the old sensors. So this site was selected because it's on obviously very old competent bedrock and it's north so the signals from the Soviet would just travel across the Arctic over this way. And so basically that's how it was established originally until it got a new purpose as far as for the test ban treaty. But the unforgiving Canadian Arctic cold has taken a toll on the equipment, says Ross Ashley. This is the original uh, vault built in the 1960s. Uh, this houses the seismometer. Uh, a lot of these are uh, uh, very old. Some of these are uh, subject to uh, letting water in and icing up, uh, effectively desensitizing the seismometers. The aging equipment is well past its design life. The rusting radio towers that transmit the data will also be replaced. But the biggest challenge? Power. The propane fuel is heavy. So is the vehicle that carries it. Refueling the tanks can only be done in winter, when the ice is at its thickest to hold the weight. Seismic technician Fred Murphy navigates across frozen lakes to reach the stations. Yeah, then we pump for like half an hour or 45 minutes. The tank. As part of the upgrade, solar energy will be used to power the sites. The solar power supplies now uh, should be very reliable and hopefully uh, run without propane. It's taken almost two years to upgrade the 20 sites. Now one of the final radio towers is to be installed. The hard work pays off. The signal flows into the central recording facility. In less than five minutes, it's transmitted to Ottawa then on to analysts in Vienna, Austria. Jacques Pretorius, seismic engineer, CTBTO. So this is a, a proof that uh, the station which was installed today is sending data. Definitely we know that the, this, the installation was successful. So uh, it, it's a good feeling. This report was produced by Kirsty Grigorich Hansen for the United Nations.